Good evening, everyone. So uh, today we are continuing our journey into the um, ever evolving world of technology and security where innovation takes the lead. So in our ongoing exploration of digital resilience, uh, we are thrilled to delve into a new chapter, automation of server hardening with Sashika again. So as you know, in today's fast paced uh, digital landscape, uh, the need of robust security practices is more critical than ever. It's uh, not just about understanding the challenges, but also about harnessing the power of automation to fortify our digital defenses. So, and once again, we are privileged to have uh, Mr. Shashika Suren as our expert guide for this session. Uh, he, as the head of system security and site reliability engineering, he ro his role continues to be instrumental in ensuring the strength and resilience of our systems at ADL. And with over 14 years of experience, he has honed his expertise in Linux system administration, information security, and the art of safeguarding digital worlds through automation. So uh, Mr. Suren's journey is fortified by his master's degree in information security and bachelor's degree in information and communication technology from the esteemed University of Columbus School of Computing. Uh, his unwavering dedication is exemplified by a series of prestigious uh, Red Hat certification underscoring his mastery of automation in the realm of serving server hardening as well. So uh, today's conversation about the automation of server hardening, it's just not going to be a theoretical discussion, but a practical conversation of how automation can proactively shield us, our businesses, as well as our companies against the ever evolving landscape of cyber threats. So get ready for hands on insights, real world examples and deep dive into the transformative power of automation in securing our digital universe with uh, Shashika. Hence, uh, join us welcoming Shashika Sure, a true luminary in the tech world as he leads us through the world of automation in server hardening and its pivotal role in fortifying our digital frontiers. Over to you, Shashika. You're on mute, Shashika. <laughs> So thank you, Chamini. So uh, good day to you all. And uh, this is going to be the second sessions that we will be covering the, uh, the the hardening aspects. So the first we actually discussed about the uh, uh, what we can do and what we should uh, consider when it comes to this uh, hardening, and like uh, especially uh, when you are going with the, uh, the existing server. And if it is a new spin up server, so what we need to consider. So there are certain checks that we need to eliminate if it is existing server that uh, especially the disk management part and uh, several other things like uh, the auditing also like uh, there are concerns with auditing so that we have to consider. But if it is a new uh, installation, so obviously you can go from the scratch uh, to do the hardening and uh, there might be few things to eliminate uh, due to the application uh, constraints but so uh, that's basically what we have been focused on uh, the last last sessions actually we have been focused on uh, the what we need to do and what kind of checks that we have to consider so uh, so this is going to be the second uh, session on uh, server hardening which is uh, what we are trying to focus here is the automation side. The reason why we will be looking at here is, of course, uh, since you all are working under a sort of a, a enterprise environment, so work work with the enterprise environment customers. So obviously, we are talking about not just one, two servers. We are talking about like 100 plus servers. Uh, sometimes you might deal with the different clients, so they might have a someone have 50 servers, someone have 50 plus servers. So if you look at the all together that what type the, the, the servers that you are going to manage, obviously it's a hundred plus servers. So when it comes to the hardening side, so the security hardening, so it is not practical to do it in a manual way. So uh, definitely there, there are a lot of issues like uh, that. Uh, of course, if you look at the hardening process is a very much time consuming one. And at least if you if you take one particular server to harden, they will be definitely taking about uh, a half a day to completely do the hardening. So if you look at for the full day times, uh, like for the eight hours of working time, we can do only two meshes. Uh, but 
let's say if you go with the automation so it's just a matter of running the automated scripts so where we will be getting uh, hardened servers within few most probably within half an hour De depending on the the uh, server capacity definitely it's a half an hour's time uh, so for the hardening so that's uh, that's why we will be looking at the, about the hardening and obviously once you go with the hardening so we don't want to do the same thing again and again so where the human errors are going to very much uh, reduce on that case uh, the the error error rate will be definitely uh, uh, reduced when you do with dealing with the automation so basically uh, having that in mind so we are going to discuss the security hardening automations today and uh, mainly uh, in in this the today's agenda that we are mainly focused on uh, the automation language and uh, we'll do some practices there like how we are going to do it and I'll show you uh, certain written playbooks uh, to do the hardening as well. So um, in today's context we will be looking at certain things like uh, I'll just give you some brief about who are we and then again uh, why we are going to do the hardening automations and the the recommended language recommended uh, automation engine is the ansible so why we are why we have choose the ansible to do that one and then of course the ansible architecture and some basis of the ansible environment of course uh, uh, so if you want to learn the ansible obviously you have to have hands on experience so you can start on uh, creating simple playbooks and then again you can go for a uh, uh, advance as well so just it's basically this is very much simple so i'll i'll show you how simple is it because if you have any experience with the bash scripting so if you compare with the bash scripting so which is pretty much easy even even uh, easier than the bash scripting as well so you can understand how, how like how much uh, it is easy for us to deal with it and obviously it is not rocket science uh, so we can go ahead so we'll 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 see what is this uh, ansible and we will be looking at the key key uh, terms terminologies on the ansible environment and then uh, the concept of ansible role because this is going to be very much important when you go for a manage in the large project like uh, server hardening and at the end of this presentations we will definitely have a demo i'll show you the written playbook and uh, we'll try to harden the red hat enterprise version 9 machine because um, most of the industries are either using they are using windows and license or windows server or in other case other hand we are using the red hat enterprise linux in the production system the reason is uh, the subscription uh, support so that's why we i just choose the uh, the red hat enterprise linux environment to do the demo so basically we we are devsecops teams at adl so we delivering different type of cyber security services to the client uh, starting from uh, mobile applications, VAPT, API, web applications, network and the server infrastructure, VAPT. And of course, uh, we can say that we, we, we are having uh, expertise on uh, security and software supply chain part uh, and the DevSecOps uh, consultation and the implementations where we will be looking at a lot of areas in the DevSecOps side and the security post assessments compromise assessment will be one of the other two major major engagement that we are dealing with the clients um, and also uh, the cloud security and the cloud, cloud cost optimization consultation this is also one of the key area as of now so we are running with the uh, dollar issue so we'll be providing the consultation on the cloud cost optimization as well so this is uh, who are we like we we are under the iot and middle practice at the ada uh, as a separate team, DevSecOps teams. So uh, let's look at uh, why the hardening automation is very much important and uh, why we mainly consider about the uh, Linux environment on this regard. So basically, if you want to do the hardening, so we have uh, two different things. We, we need to do a hardening for a Windows server environment as well as Linux because if you look at the data centers, it can be on-premise, cloud, or anything. Most of the time, like uh, most of our IT infrastructure-related things, like Active Directory, email service, those things most probably run uh, by using the uh, Windows environment. In some cases, 
even to run some applications we are running with the uh, windows environment windows server environment of course uh, when you are dealing with the windows server since we have the active directory environment so active directory we can leverage the active directory to uh, do the hardening for the windows server all the windows servers it's just a matter of creating the uh, group policy for uh, for the respective uh, organization units and then we can just force those uh, force it to the uh, the the that particular ou then obviously the 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 hardening rules will be automatically applied to that particular servers so basically when you are dealing with the windows environment since hardening on the windows environment is just a matter of changing the group policies so it's very much easy except the patch management so patch management obviously we have to uh, do separately like they they do also provide the different type of solutions to do the patch management automations on that as well like wsas servers so that's why we really don't want to worry about the hardening automation on the windows environment because it's already there but when it comes to the linux so linux environment respective of the distributions you might use uh, in in industry most probably as we have experienced uh, we are seeing that uh, most probably we are dealing with either the red hat enterprise linux that is most probably on the productions and the staging environment and the development environment we mainly use in the ubuntu so that is how we are dealing with it and uh, so irrespective of the distribution so we have a two different distributions mainly we are using red hat and the uh, debian so irrespective of the distributions uh, we don't have a centralized way to do the hardening many hardening part on the linux environment so that's why they have come up with a solution separate solution called uh, automation languages automation engines and uh, we can do lot of automations by using those uh, automation engines so there are mainly like if you look at the past uh, past decade like uh, this is have been this these uh, automations concepts have been in the industry for about uh, like since 2013 2014 like 2000 12 13 actually most probably so this is where they have started this concepts on uh, automations uh, before that obviously we have the concept of automations by using the bash scripting or any other any other script language script languages but this is a different concepts that they have been brought into the our mindset that is actually the what they call it as a automation engines so there are different type of automation engines like we have uh, ansible we have puppet we have sold we have chef out of that actually uh, even i didn't use the chef and sold but the puppet obviously i have experience with the puppet so the main difference in between the puppet and the ansible is uh, puppet is a agent based solutions where if you want to do any type of automations very first thing is that you need to do is you need to install the puppet agent onto the respective machines so that is the sort of a concerns that we are having let's say if you are managing 1000 machines so you need to install 1000 puppet agents to those machines whereas the benefits that is coming with the, the ansible is ansible that you are getting is not the agent base agentless you don't want to install any agent in the linux environment it's just a matter of if you open the port 22 if you are dealing with the windows and sorry linux environment so they will be run through their all the uh, scripts basically using the port 22 ssh port that is basically normally when you when you want to manage any linux environment remotely ssh is the obvious uh, solutions that we are using to manage the linux machine in remote manner so you need to use the same thing there is no nothing magic zero magic actually you can use the ansible of course they are supporting the agent less and you can use the existing ssh communications to deploy any kind of automated concepts automated uh, place we are i'll tell you those uh, languages that we have a playbook concepts place concepts 
so i'll just explain those things uh, uh, down the line but when you want to uh, run those plays what you need to do is just a matter of opening the port 22 that's it simple as that you don't want to do anything no agent so the agent less and an other thing is uh, since this is using uh, like if you look at this ansible playbook you will understand that it is very much human readable language so very much simple you don't want to too much worry about it so you don't like even if you don't have a prior knowledge on the development that is totally fine still you can deal with it so one of the key thing that um, that that ansible has been uh, introduced in the environment is the person who is using the ansible they don't want to have a prior knowledge on the uh, software development that is not really required so that's simple thing that they have been given with ansible so so what you really need to understand ansible is a simple automation language you can definitely use it in anywhere uh, in this is one of the domain that we are using ansible but there are so many other domains as well like say for example if you want to manage your linux environment if you want to manage your applications deployment of your applications of course you can use ansible playbook to do that one as well so that's the powerful of this one so you don't really want to do it all the task by manually even if you want to deploy your kubernetes clusters you can use ansible uh, so these are the use cases that we have been used to utilize in our environment as well so so for the past couple of years so though that uh, puppet have been already there in the market but ansible have been uh, take over the entire uh, automation languages and now it's almost ansible is the leader on the automation engine so the puppet is also in this region I'm, i have never seen that puppet is utilizing using in this region chef sold of course uh, it's very rare that we have seen uh, utilization for the automation engine so because of these reasons definitely we also recommending you to use the ansible and these the the the, the entire focus in the today's context is the uh, to use the ansible for the automation so basically if you look at the advantages uh, this is purely the it supports the cross platform let's say for example if you really do do not want to uh, uh, let's say uh, like you need to manage your windows environment your linux environment even your network devices let's say you have a 40 40 gate firewall or you have a palo alto firewall or you have a checkpoint firewall or you have any other kind of other devices like cisco devices so if you want to manage your network devices network devices if you want to manage your linux operating system if you want to manage your windows oss if you want to manage your any other kind of sun solaris unix ibm aix unix operating systems guaranteed that you without any doubt you can use ansible ansible is supporting for the cross platform where you can manage entire uh, network devices you can manage your linux operating system you can manage your windows irrespective of the uh, the infrastructure whether it can be a physical server whether it can be a virtual cloud environment container environment that doesn't make any sense irrespective of your infrastructure you can definitely uh, manage your entire uh, environment there so that's the one of the major thing that you need to understand and as i told you this is very much human readable automation so we are by reading the ansible playbook uh, you even you can easily understand it so that's the simplicity that they have given uh, when you want to run the ansible i'll i'll explain these words huh? play what is the playbook what is the place so we we will be going to discuss uh, in uh, within couple of slides so basically if you have experience with xml xml is a kind of a, uh, a markup language similarly uh, there is another markup language called yaml y a m l yet another markup language so yaml will be used, utilized to write it down your playbooks if you want to write your uh, content the ansible will definitely using as a backend language 
Yemen, yet another mark of language. So very much easy, uh, very much uh, understandable. The only concern here is with the YAML, it's very sensitive for the indentations, line indentations. Say for example, I'll show you, uh, just I'll show you one uh, playbook that I, we have written. Uh, this is just an example. You need to very much concern about the line indentations. This is what we call it as indentation. So space in between these things. So the line in uh, the in the Ansible environment, like YAML, when you are dealing with the YAML, if you made mistakes on the indentations, let's say if you made a mistake in here, I'll show you that one. So just uh, uh, I just put the backspace. When I check the, uh, there is a command called syntax check. You will be going to learn these things. Syntax check on the playbook environment. So it will show you the syntax errors. The syntax error is the indentation issues. Because these are very much, very much uh, sensitive to the indentations, line indentations. If you made any single mistakes, definitely you can't run the playbook. So basically, that's what you really need to understand here uh, when, when you are dealing with the YAML, the, the sensitive to the indentations. And of course, it's a perfect description for the applications where you can manage any kind of applications. You can deal with any kind of applications and it's pretty much well documented and very well processed. So you don't want to worry about it. Let's say, for example, if you want to install the nginx environment if you want to install the apache environment if you want to do the hardening on the nginx and the apache obviously guaranteed that one this is supported so it's a perfect description of the applications and since this is a, when you write it down you can see this is a simple playbook uh, i'll explain what is the playbook since this is a simple ansible uh, automation script we'll, we'll say like that so if you look at here, this is very much plain text, similar to the source code. Since these are similar to the source code, what you can do is you can use any of your versioning control systems, software version, source code versioning systems, like um, GitLab, uh, Bitbucket, GitHub, whatever you used to manage your Ansible uh, codes as well. So you don't want to have a separate environment to do that one. So this is very much pretty much straightforward because it's a simple plain text. And one of the important thing, uh, I'll again explain it. When you are going to deal with Ansible, there are three components that you need to understand. The, the one major component here is the inventory. Inventory in the sense, the list of servers which we are going to manage through the Ansible. If you if you are dealing with the uh, most probably on-premise data centers or even if you are going to deal with the cloud environment, if you are dealing with the virtual machines, of course, you have nothing to worry. Uh, you can manage the inventory by your own. You can put the IP address. These are the these are the machines which we are going to manage, right? That is, you can by by looking at the IP address of each and every machine, you can create inventory. But let's say when you are going with the uh, environment like Kubernetes cluster environment, like uh, EKS, uh, AKS, Azure Kubernetes environment, or uh, Google GCP Kubernetes environment. In that scenarios, the servers will be spin up and spin down based on your scaling policies and the workload that you are running. So in that case, today's machines will not be available in tomorrow's with the same IP. So dynamically changing. In that sense, you need to have a mechanisms to manage those inventories in a dynamic way. So Ansible is definitely supporting the dynamic inventories where you, you can write it down your own Python scripts to manage your dynamic inventories. That is supported. So Ansible will support for both static inventories as well as dynamic inventories. In our case, I'll just show you how to, how to create a uh, static inventory. That's a simple thing. 
but dynamic industry inventories are a bit of a complex one so you need to write it down the uh, required python uh, scripts to gather the information from the relevant cloud providers so that's the dynamic inventory that ansible is definitely supporting for the dynamic inventories the other thing is the integration part and the orchestration set ansible guaranteed that you can do that you can support for the ansible ansible definitely support for the orchestrations like you can integrate with your uh, jenkin pipelines you can integrate with your uh, if you have a idea about red hat satellite servers you can integrate with your red hat satellite servers so that's everything is possible on that case so the orchestration is supported when you are going to deal with this uh, uh, ansible environment so any like uh, jenkins satellite server environment so you can integrate with your ansible playbook with this so let's look at the architecture the key component so this is basically the the ansible engine this is by basically we are selling as i ansible engine. the machine which you install the ansible this machine we particularly call as a Controller node. Controller node. The machines which you are going to manage host environment, public cloud, private cloud environment, those are we call it as a manage nodes. Manage nodes. Because those are we are going to manage it. So in the controller node, keep in mind uh, though the Ansible is supporting for the cross platform, you cannot take the Windows machine as your controller node because there is no package created for the ansible packages created for the windows environment you can have your controller machines only the controller machine that you can have it is a linux variation it can be red hat or it can be a debian that doesn't matter only thing here is you need to have a linux machines because in order to install like whenever you want to deal with the ansible it's just a simple thing you need to install ansible and the python only nothing much because ansible is purely totally de 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 developed on top of the python so you really require the python to deal with the ansible so you have to have ansible you need to have the ansible and python installed on your controller node this machine so if you want to install it you just need to have the linux so that you cannot have the controller not the windows environment cannot be converted to the controller basically but of course the manage host manage host can be anything like you can have a uh, windows machines you can have a linux machines you can have a network devices like routers firewalls that doesn't make any sense so basically there are three components which is very much important one is inventory inventory in the sense the list of machines which we are going to manage list of machines which we are going to manage then the modules when you say modules it's something like this say for example we are going to write it down a simple playbook a very simple playbook to install a let's say install a engine next engine next to the linux environment or start the service start the engine next in the linux machine let's say when you when you want to deal with that starting part let's say if you are going to start the linux if you're going to start that one so the most important thing here is most important thing here is like you might use the ansible but still in the back end to start the service basically what you need to run here is the system ctl command so irrespective of the linux environment if you want to start anything you will be saying start nginx service that's it this is the command that you are going to run though we are using the nginx also that doesn't make any sense differences still they need to run this command in the in the manage nodes in this one of your node has to run this command so they have to anyhow invoke the system ctl command to start the service so in that case if you are not logged into the linux machines so obviously we can't run the system ctl straight away so the modules what they are going to do is they are going to sort of a representing 
a different type of uh, packages like uh, commands that you are going to run it in the Linux machine. Say for example, uh, you can see all the modules in here. So basically, uh, I have already installed uh, when you want to convert your machine as a controller. Like this is my personal laptop and I just convert this as a controller. Personally in the sense of his laptop. So uh, this that I have been converted as a uh, controller node. Right now you can say and see that. Very much simple. So uh, it already says that we are having the latest versions 2.9.6. So nothing to worry about it. Then again, if you want to next package that you need to run here is the Python. Python 36. So uh, it says the Python 2.7. This is I have already installed the Python as well. So I'm not going to go for installations here, but uh, this is already there. So what you really required is Python and the Ansible uh, packages. So I have already installed these two packages uh, on here. Now this is going to be a basically this is be a this is now controller. You might see I'll show you one of the interested thing. There are there is Ansible documentation command called Ansible doc. So you can see I'll show you when you say Ansible doc minus L. Sorry guys you will be able to see different documentation see these are the documents of different modules let let me show you how many number of modules are having right now I think more than 3000 yes exactly so we have a more than 3000 like more than 3000 basically in here we have a ansible modules modules we have 3387 modules just imagine the set of modules that we are having 3387 300, 3, modules are available in this Ansible environment. If you look at one by one, I'll show you just for your information. These are different Ansible modules. Like if you have a 810 network devices, see, if you want to manage those things, you need to use these modules. Manage 18 networks, 810 networks, AX, Soft AX, Thunder, whatever. I'm not quite sure what are those things actually but there are different things. So uh, we will we'll go with the uh, like this is for the ACI fabricators. Uh, this is actually for the uh, the SDN configuration is ACI fabrications and the uh, uh, the other different things that you can fabricate it like uh, ACI or SPF configurations. So this is basically for the SDN. So Acme accounts you can see the Acme accounts configuration. Uh, these are the modules. I'll show you one by one. Uh, so if you want to manage with the if you want to deal with the AWS like if you want to uh, manage the AWS API gateway this is the module that we are going to use. Let me show you that one. So uh, we will see one of these things. Uh, let's say for example uh, this is for the a WAF environment and everything S3 bucket management. So you can manage by using this module even if you look at this one. Uh, S3, let's say Ansible doc, you can refer these documentations. Huh? This is already a, once you install the Ansible, this will be automatically available for you. So now you can see uh, this module allows the user to manage the S3 buckets and the objects within them. So you can manage the S3 bucket and the objects within them. So you have the options here, see different options. When you go down, you can see some examples as well. See. So this is what they this this particular place. This is actually when you this is when you write it down a one one content this uh, one task. This is a one set of tasks. This is what we call it as a play. This is a one play. What they are going to do here is by using this module, they will be going to create bucket call my bucket. They are going to put the object call key dot txt. The source will be taken from my laptop and the mod is put this is uh, rgw uh, re, uh, the you can i'm not quite sure what is this uh, module says uh, the parameter says you can refer these documentations and the s3 url so this is your url so you can see how simply that is creating this is one play 
so whatever you are executing aws cli command in the s3 bucket will be executed through this module to implement this task so basically the module will be referring to like that see so let's see some other values as well like say for example uh, other modules as well very much familiar for, uh, very much useful module for our context so this is for the azure resource management context so you can see there are so many modules for the azure mm. we'll see how many modules are available for the azure 169 modules so i think a uh, lot of tasks can be done like if you want to manage the azure environment so you have the ability to do with, with the uh, the Ansible modules. There are a lot of modules available. So this is for the big IP. So you can see the big IP. And this is, uh, I'm not quite sure these things for what. You can go into these documentations and definitely you can refer it. Uh, like I said, if you dealing with the checkpoint devices, you can manage it. Cloudflare, cloud formations. This is for creating the cloud formations files. Xenos, I think Xenos is also another vendor uh, vendor that they will be supporting for that one as well. Likewise. So if you don't have a module, uh, you can't you can write it the playbooks. That is one of the important thing that you need. You can't play with the Ansible. See, this is for the EC2. If you want to create the EC2 machines, terminate it, start it, stop it, you can run the playbook here. So this is this module is going to be used. So you need to have like while you are dealing with these modules, you might you might have idea. So there are different uh, things that we like. Let's say for example, uh, you have a module called service. We'll see that one. This is very much important for the Linux. Control service on remote hosts. This is when you want to control your services. Like if you want to start the service, stop the service, enable the service from the boot up. Uh, restart the service this is the module that you are using basically when you use this module they will be executing the system ctl command on here on the manager that's why we the we are using the modules so the ansible is entirely depend on the modules you can't run any ansible command any ansible playbook without the modules guaranteed that one. so when you go down you will be seeing the different examples here so you can see the the ansible is good this is service call uh, the service module is used this will be what they are going to do is apache http d starting so when they when we run this playbook when we run this particular play this is what we call it as a task in ansible this task will call it as a play it is called call it as a play so that's what you are going to deal with so when you run this one, if you want to restart it, this is the like you can say name state is restarted. You can see that we are changing on the state here. If you want to stop it, stop the service, you can say stop. So when you run this one, it will back and run the system CTL stop uh, HTTPD dot service. So that's how it's working. So this is basically the Ansible module. Like you need to understand that when you go with the Ansible module, we are rely 100% rely on the modules because the modules will tells us what to do and how to do it. Uh, because the module will execute the backend command on the managed nodes. So we have a lot of modules. Uh, if you don't have the modules, obviously we have a doubt like we cannot run this uh, playbook without the modules. Inventory, as I told you, basically very simple. So we are dealing with the inventory because it says what are the hosts that we are going to manage by using the sensible environment so uh, this is the ansible architecture like we can integrate with the public cloud private cloud we can we can manage the man host in the uh, host in the uh, data center host in the cloud environment host in the uh, physical environment and the content can be taken from the uh, configuration management databases that is possible so this is very simple IT automation engine and you need to understand that we can we need to rely on the modules when we are dealing with Ansible architecture. 
So this is basically simple Ansible architecture, and of course uh, they are using the uh, domain-specific language uh, to describe the state. Like state description is very much important. The reason is we call this Ansible as a idempotent, idempotent, idempotent in the sense no matter how many times you run the playbook, that doesn't make any sense. Like if the machine in, is in the desired state, let's say for example, you need to, uh, here you have, a, you have a playbook that you, you have a task that is played to stop the HTTP and you are going to run it into this host machine. Once you run it, they will stop the service. Second time you run it, if it is already stopped it, then they will not going to do anything. They will just skip the task and complete the playbook, complete the entire task sets, and say that there are no changes done, that machine is already in that state. How many times, number of times that you have run, if the machine is in the desired state, desired state, they are not going to do anything. That's what we call it as ID important. So keep in mind that Ansible is, we call it as idempotent, that if the machine is in the desired state, they are not going to do any changes. They will just skip the playbook. That's it. Simple as that. So the state managed maintenance will be there in the Ansible architecture. So let's learn a uh, few things uh, in the Ansible, like uh, we'll see how we are going to deal with this uh, inventory file. We'll see how we are going to deal with these uh, configurations because there are there is another file called uh, Ansible CFG. So Ansible CFG is one of the important thing, important file, which is we call it as Ansible configuration file. We'll see how we are going to manage it, Ansible CFG as well. So basically, uh, when it comes to the security domain, so we can we can use Ansible for server hardening. We can use the Ansible for patch update, which is not recommended to use it because if you are going to do the patch update, you have to do it manually and you have to attend to it because then only you know what that has happened, what kind of packages it has upgraded because with the patch update, of course, your existing applications might not work as expected your customized applications, your developed applications. So because of the library file upgrade, because of the uh, the, the backend server upgrade, because of the uh, the the other other dependency updates. So because of that, so your applications might broken there. So when you do the patch update, guaranteed and it's a recommendations, you need to be attend on to the patch update and it has to be a manual one. Because don't do, don't run through the uh, the automations tools. That is not recommended. It has to be done by yourself, uh, not through the uh, automations. But of course, that is possible. Then again, uh, Ansible again will we can use it for the vulnerability remediations. That is, they are supporting. Uh, let's say, for example, if you see the SSH, uh, there are weak ciphers. Of course, you can use the Ansible playbook to the uh, to remediate those things. Then again, uh, network device hardening. So uh, you can use the Ansible playbook to do the Ansible playbook to the uh, perform the network device hardening. And then again, the incident responses. Of course, uh, most of the time, whenever you want to automate the incident response, like uh, uh, automation responses, you can use Ansible playbook there as well. So basically, um, Let's go go into the sort of understanding of the Ansible. Let's learn how to deal with this one. So from this one onwards, we will be sometimes dealing with a lot of practicals. Uh, as I told you, we have a two two different nodes. We call it as a managed node and the controller node. So the managed node is the nodes we are going to manage through the Ansible. Uh, you can you can use the you can have the Linux OSs as a managed node. You can have the Microsoft Windows based OSs as a managed node. You can have the network devices as a managed node. If you are dealing with the ma Linux OSs for your managed node, you need to have the Python 36 or latest version uh, to deal with the Ansible. If you want to deal with the Microsoft, uh, obviously there are two dependencies that you need to have the PowerShell 3.0 version and .NET Framework 4.0 for the latest. 
So if you do have those things, obviously you can delete it. The network devices, there is nothing like that. So since they, they are dealing with the firmware, very small operating systems. So if you enable the SSH on your devices, that is totally fine because we need to like Ansible controller not need to connect to your managed node, <coughs> connect to a managed node uh, and, and uh, perform certain tasks, uh, whatever the, the Ansible says. The controller node is the node where you write it down your entire task sets in your environment and the inventory will be managed in your environment. So the entire thing will be there. So that is called controller node. So controller node, of course, it has to be a Linux machine. Sorry. It has to be a Linux machine. You cannot deal with any other environment. So guaranteed as a controller node only supported OS is Linux flavor, any flavor. It can be Ubuntu, it can be a Red Hat. See, this is a Ubuntu machine, so uh, we are running in Ubuntu. So you, what you again need is you need to install the uh, Ansible and the Python latest versions. That is totally fine. So when you're dealing with this, you are totally done for the preparation. You have your machine is already prepared to deal with the Ansible, deal with the Ansible. So that's exactly what you are going to do. So let's say let's go back to our Ansible environment. So this is the Ansible machines that I have been already installed. So basically, uh, basically, uh, you can see that we have the um, once you install the Ansible, you will be getting the directory called Ansible, and here you have the Ansible.cfg configuration file. The recommended way is this is this is location is here. This will very much important for us to deal with it because this Ansible configuration file tells us where are the inventory location. This is where you are going to take the inventory location and user details. When you logged into the remote machine, you should define the users and the if it is a password based so password loss, so how we are going to deal with see here. Are you going to ask the password? pseudo password like uh, gain the privileges like here here i have logged in as a uh, normal user if you want to run the privilege command you need to run it with the pseudo su pseudo su environment this is actually run as an administrator command simply just imagine this is run as administrator when you run the pseudo su it's what it says in windows environment run as administrator so that is what we are going to deal with here so you can see uh, the ansible is there now the thing here is the practice is we will be not going to use the default Ansible configuration file. Instead, we are going to create night right now. I have a create a folder under the under my home directory called Ansible. Best method is you need to have a separate directory there. Like by any name. For the for the understanding purposes, I put the same the put as Ansible. So what you are going to do here is you are going to create ansible cfg by your own by skipping the original configuration file but you need to take the configuration parameters from there so even when i creating this ansible cfg file i have taken the configuration parameters from that here you can see under the default section we have given the inventory locations it says uh, any file name uh, you don't want to say inventory you can say host any name but anyway what i am saying here is it is under the same directory remote user since uh, i have been already spin up a linux machine here hope you can be able to see it i have been already spin up a linux machine here so this linux machine uh, this is a Uh, this is this Linux machine is going to be uh, this is actually a rel 9 operating system and uh, <clears throat> which is run on top of the AWS environment. So we are using the EC2 uh, when you want to log into this machine. See, I'll show you that one. So uh, when you want to log into this machine, I have already uh, enabled my IP address. 
uh, to the SSH. Uh. This is you can see. Let me show you. I have already enabled the uh, SSH I, my IP address from the inbound rules. Um, see here. This SSH rule I have already enabled. See, this is my machine. So I have already enabled the SSH for my machine. Um, so I don't want to do anything there in the security group. So uh, I can now directly access to this machine. Let me check that one. By using the public IP. So uh, I'm going to use the, uh, the key file. The way that we are going to use is ec2-user at IP address. So whenever you are going to log into here, so basically you logged in as a regular user, but you can't do any administrative task here. You can't do anything. You can't do anything. So in that case, what you need to do is you need to run the sudo command to gain the privilege access. Now, when you run this command, you are not putting any password there. That's exactly the behavior of here. So I'm logging remote user. I have configured as EC2 user. Password asking is false because here we are dealing with the we are dealing with the uh, basically we are dealing with the uh, basically we are dealing with the the key base logging so not the password base it's a key base and once you logged in in order to execute other commands you need to do the privilege escalations this is the other thing that we are going to do we have said the become through become method sudo become user root ask password false because here also they didn't ask the password see without asking the password we have logged in there are certain configurations that we need to do i'm not going to configure de define uh, the, uh, ensure like I'm not going to explain it because this is actually there what you are need to do is you need to change it in the sudos file it's very much simple it's very much simple you just need to do a changes in the sudos file I am definitely not going to explain you this one uh, so this is just a this is just a Linux actually right anyway so that's how you will deal with now I have created the Ansible CFG Whenever you have created the Ansible CFG, the behavior of here is if you have uh, three different files, like we have, we can have the Ansible ETC, Ansible, Ansible CFG. This is the global configuration. This is the global configuration. And we can have uh, create a separate Ansible directory and we can have it in our environment. The precedence of getting the access, looking at the environment, like looking at the configurations, always goes to the the place that you are running the ansible playbook if you are running the ansible playbook from this folder where the ansible where the ansible configuration file is located the precedence goes to this one not to the global configuration they will take the global configuration if anything is not defined here so i have defined only one two three four five six seven eight parameters rest of the other parameters will going to take it from the the global configuration file only eight parameters will be going to consider from this one and the rest of the other parameters will going to take it from the ansible cfg that is the behavior of the ansible so that's how they take the configuration in the ansible environment so you have the ansible cfg file created in here that's simple as that now if you run the ansible uh, there is a command hyphen hyphen version you can see uh, actually the uh, location see config file locations now see here they have not taken the global configuration file when you run this command you are seeing that the configuration file is taken from the home sashika ansible ansible.cfg so these are the uh, module path these are the uh, the python versions 3.8.10 you can see that one the python versions that i'm running right now 3.8 not uh, that that is latest sort of a latest versions that we are running right now right this is how 
we are dealing with this ansible playbook now the inventory so in the ansible playbook if you look at the ansible cfg i have said that inventory file name is inventory which is located under the same folder so if you look at the inventory see you can see the inventory this the the way that we are going to deal with the inventory is a inventory basically static inventory this is a static inventory that we are playing with static inventory is a sort of a any any file type of any file format one any file in the sense this is a kind of way like you will be having a, a, a square bracket here and under the square bracket you are putting the this is a kind of a grouping like you can say if you if you are going to install db database in one, one another set of servers you can say db servers if you are going to install um, the, the if you are going to deal with the reverse proxy you can say like this so this is a kind of a grouping of the environment like you can group entire thing based on your requirement so you can you can use ip address or fully qualified domain name i'm just setting up the uh, uh, the ip address of this new machine this is the new machine so 13 13.232.113.228 so this is the machine so this is the unix machines so likewise what you can say is you can you can define based on your requirement you can group those things now when you run in the playbook you can you can say okay what are the hosts that we are going to impact on this particular playbook or what are the hosts that you are going to impact on this other playbook likewise you can define the playbook details so that the purpose of categorization is to manage your environment very much easily so either you can you can have a non manageable environment like just you can put all the uh, uh, details names uh, uh, dns name fqdn no ip addresses uh, without grouping it uh, just a simple way or uh, the standard mechanism is to do the grouping so i'm just uh, deleting these things because i have only one machine so this is the uh, the any type of file this is how we are managing the inventory now we have configured the ansible cfg file and we have configured the inventory now it's a matter of dealing with the dealing with the ansible modules and the roles let me first explain this one when you want to like i'll i'll take a first example uh, example one or oh, we'll we'll see we, we'll uh, we'll write it down one so i am going to uh, write a playbook install engine x or httpd dot yml so this is the playbook so the way that we are going to run here is it's a uh, for the understanding of this this whether this is a yaml yml file or not we are putting the yml otherwise keep in mind that the extension is not pretty much important for us this is for our own understanding we are keeping these things guys so keep in mind that one in in install underscore httpd.yml so the way we are going to write it down the playbook here is this is what we call it as a playbook we started with the three dashes three dotted this is the standard mechanism then we are going to put a name this is a global name for the entire playbook install this is simple one now we are writing httpd and start the service then what we are going to say is we are going to say host what are the impacted host in here we will be giving the group name see here we have the web underscore servers we are going to say web underscore servers so you can put the if you if you if you are going to put it into the reverse proxy you can say the host host then it will be impacting to the host group web underscore servers then what you are going to do is you are going to say tasks so we we are going to define the different task here so the different task is first thing is installation so we need to refer the ansible doc file uh, actually uh, there is a, a module called dnf 
Now YAM is not available, therefore we have a DNA. What you are going to do is you need to use this one. See here. Uh, if you want to install it, remove it. See, state absent. If you want to install it, a latest version, you have to say state latest, state present or latest. If you want to run the patch update, this is a simple one. Shall we run this one? We'll see. We are going to run the patch update. Just, just a simple one. I'm just copy and paste it here. Uh, but make make sure that the indentation is properly set. This is actually these two parameters are module sub module sub parameter. These two parameters are uh, relevant to the DNF module. This is just a name. This particular one we call it as a play. Play. This is a play. If you if you write it down multiple play like that, different tasks, multiple play like that, that will call it as a playbook. When you have a collective play plays, that is what we call it as a playbook. See here, we are using a module called DNA. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to run a patch update on this machine. So we have already configured this one. It's just a matter of Ansible playbook. Uh, what you need to say is install dot one this will but i'll show you this will not exactly run i'll show you why see it's it says paddle 13 to may this this ip address un, unreachable so it's basically say un, un, unreachable unreachable in the sense actually here when you want to log into this machine it's not the password based authentication it's basically password less authentication it's basically password less authentication so key based authentications in that case what you need to do is you need to run the um, let me show you that one you need to have a switch call uh, option call uh, this option private key details this is where we will be using this pri private key to log into this machine so what you need to do here is you need to say minus hyphen hyphen private key and the private key locations this is where i have been set the private key now this is going to work so this gathering fact in the sense what they really going to do is they are going to gather the information about the particular machines the operating system version ip address of this machine now they are running the package upgrade if you see here if you log into this machine if you run the ps minus ef command ps minus ef command uh, grep uh, yum you will be seeing that you need to see that one sorry not the yum actually the dna see now there is a, a you can see a process running here root bin sh echo become success success and user bin python see this is home ec2 ansible temporary ansible directory dnf.python so they are running the patch upgrade route now the dnf command so you can see now this one so if you run the watch command you can see whether it is completed when it is completed you will be seeing that in here also that is going to complete That's I think done, right? Yeah. No, 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 that's not done. So basically, so now it is updating the patch up, running the patch update. So it's very much simple. So if you have a thousand servers just update the inventory run it simple as that simple as that we can't see the with the watch command this one we'll see that one. so it's actually running still running see this is run through the uh, not a manual one this is a patch update run by the run through the uh, 
basically run through the um, the ansible so still running the patch upgrade i think this has been stuck somewhere because uh, we need to do the uh, yes part that's the case basically So basically, this is how we are going to deal with this play concept. So Ansible module is pretty much important as you can see that without module, we can't run anything. So playbook in the sense, if when you collect all this, when you set collectively all, all this play into one set, that is what we call it as a playbook. So the when you write it down single task by task, that one task set, we call it as a play. So that is that is the concept or the terminologies we are using in the Ansible environment. The main important thing here is what we are going to deal here is this is just a playbook that we have written. Uh, as I told you, like uh, you will be seeing that we have been written using the uh, a simple uh, environment like I'm just skipping this one. Uh, the reason here is uh, I think uh, we need to set it as uh, Now this will take some time actually if that's the case. So basically this is taking some time so that's why it's case uh, it has been done. So but fortunately it has been gone through until up now just I just run the from here I just run this one so it says it is into the latest. So uh, I just want to run, I don't want to run it again because this will be consuming our time. So anyway, this is how we are running a simple playbook. So updating the packages to the latest. So this one is one thing like let's say for example, if you want to do another task, let's say. Uh, install HTTPD. Now you will be seeing that uh, if you see the uh, RPM minus QA. Uh, query for the HTTPD, you don't see anything. So package HTTPD is not installed. What I am going to do is I am going to again use it. I am going to say name HTTPD state latest. So I'll just going to uh, comment this one. Well, right, let's remove the last comment. So now this is what we are going to do. I'll be running the same thing again. That is they are running the second task installing HTTP. Now you can see that the task has been changes. If you run the RPM minus Q HTTP, now it has been installed. You can see this one. So if you check the system CTL status command, HTTP service, it is not started, loaded but not started. We can see the, we can use the same thing. There is a module called service module. Ansible dot service, we can use this one and we can say this thing can be run and enable yes pattern. This one also has to be there. The enable yes in the sense you can see this is uh, not set to the start on boot. So we are going to set to the start on boot as well. So I'm going to do a slight modification in the playbook here. So we just straight away take in from those documentation, nah? nothing to worry. You don't want to remember anything, just remember the module names, what the exact module that we need to use. 
so I am going to say state not the reloaded started and I'm going to say enable yes we'll see the changes I'll show you that changes now again I'm running this comma running the playbook you can see that previously install HTTPD it shows us the changed now it is says okay because since the already the installation have been done there won't be any changes see they are say okay previously it was says that is changed this is changed right installation HTTPD now it says it is okay because it's already done they have done only this one so it says changed one only only this one has been changed now if you check this status you can see it is active running and the, this disable has been changed to enable so if you run multiple time now nothing to worry this is not going to work now again HTTP DC installations is not going to work again because it's already done there's nothing to work see no changes no changes all the things are okay three okays three okays gather in fact okay task install HTTP DC, okay uh, read not the reload activity task name I didn't change it uh, start in the HTTP is okay so this is basically what you really need to need uh, know about the, the uh, Ansible playbook and the place. So you can refer any 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 related modules and you can write it down. So when it comes to this environment, the most important thing here is so the hardening is not just a one single playbook. If you look at the this is I'm going to show you. This is actual Red Hat 8 hardening guide. So we are talking about dealing with like uh, multiple number of hardening checks. See here, if you look at this one, there might be at least, uh, I'm not quite sure, like here we have 15, 23, 5, 30, 28, and then again 31, 33, all together like more than 100 checks let's say more than 100 checks so it's not just easy us to just deal with the one single playbook by like this what we are going to do is since this is going to be a reused again and again there is a concept called roles ansible roles the ansible roles in the sense when you want to deal with the large uh, large uh, management configuration management it is very much easy to deal with the Ansible role rather than going with this uh, single playbook. So we can do like this. We can create, configure our own roles. So what you need to do is you need to just prepare the folder called roles and the per, for, for each and every role you can have your own names. So here I have been created as a real CIS role and this is where we have been. It contains different folders like handlers, tasks, templates, test was, so the task contain task folder contain all the all the tasks that you have written down if you look at here we have the uh, section one two three four five six section one in the sense these are different sections based on this uh, configurations based on this configuration actually we have uh, uh, not six sections we have six this is the fifth one mm sixth one yeah we have six 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 uh, six sections available here but what this particular actually this is not written by myself this is i have taken i'll show you you can take the already written uh, ansible playbook to the ansible galaxy environment i'll show you that one there is a ansible role, uh, environment called ansible galaxy this is kind of a publicly available environment where we can download it from here see what you need to do is this particular playbook will contain everything you just need to download it and then you can uh, basically you can take it there see here you can see the different way i just searched through the separate 7 you can search it through the other rel environment as well uh, 
but you can see this uh, the the different different roles uh, P, for the PCI DSS. But you can just keep in mind that the number of downloads is pretty much matter for us. See, this is the most important thing. The, there is a 34,000 plus downloads for this particular role. That means this is pretty much effective role that someone has been written down. Even you can also contribute to this one. Uh, then they will be contributed like by your names. Right, what you need to do is you just need to say, I'm going to download this one, Ansible Roll Galaxy. So just a matter of downloading it to any 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 location here. So this will be in this location. Right now you can see extracting Ansible Ansible security compliance role to home Shashik Ansible. This is my current location. You can see under the roles. Sorry. Sorry, this is going to be a different location actually. Home such a dot tensible. So if you go into here, home such a dot ansible under the roles, you can see ansible security HIPAA. You can see all the roles. Here. So if I go into copy this one, I'll let's copy into our environment. Let's copy into our environment. Um, just to show you, like. Uh, I'm going to copy it with the minus R. Now you can see that is there. So if you go into the Ansible, this particular, you can rename it. Huh? If it is too much, like uh, what you can do is move uh, to the, uh, let's say, rel 7 dash roll dash HIPAA. This is actually uh, uh, HIPAA compliance, huh? HIPAA compliance. You can go into this trail 7 uh, HIPAA compliance. If you go into here, if you go into here, CD tasks, you can see uh, it's only having main.tml. I think the entire thing has not been written here. Basically, yeah. I don't know why they have been, uh, a lot of people are going to take it down this one. defaults let's say this is nothing there this is just i think that there's nothing actually like if you look at here this particular role that doesn't have much thing yeah even they didn't write it down anything so normally all the tasks has to be in this location uh, so basically in here they don't have anything what you need to do is if you really worry about if you want to uh, continue this playbook, you can write it down the uh, the rest of the task sets based on the HIPAA guidance. So but here I'm already using uh, this is actually tested one. Uh, we have been uh, using this particular one for uh, uh, our own environment to uh, harden our uh, servers. So uh, this particular file has been written to rail 7, rail 8 and even from the rail 9. So we can use it this one for the entire rail operation environment. So here we can see like I have been actually uh, modify these things. Uh, if you can see like I have uh, removed certain contents and uh, commit comment certain things that which is we are not required. This is actually for the GDM login banner. If you if you don't have the uh, GDM, you, you can just uh, remove these things. Uh, so there is other things like uh, if you want to configure the issue.net and if you want to configure the uh, MOTD, so everything is in here. So all these parameters are in here, like you need to reach it, uh, you need to read it out uh, one by one based on your requirements. See this is first, these are the things that they will be going to like remove the unnecessary file systems. So if you look at the 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 doc document also the same command sets that we have here see here it's basically the way that they have been instructed us to do will be there as it is let me show you that one also uh, 
Um, right. So if you look at the disable the CRAMFS, so what they are saying is you just need to create a, a, a folder called EDC mod prop D under the mod prop D, any name. So here we have created a common folder file name called cis.con and we are executing whatever the commands they are saying. See. So very much simple. This is actually uh, what they are saying is these are sort of a conditional me measurements that they have been set. These are just a tag for our references. Level one, whether it is his code or not, these are these are taken from here. Level one score. This is a scored one. So everything is being taken from here. 1.1.1. Tag is for our sequence. Then we know okay what is the matching rule in the documentation. This is for our references tags. Now you can see all these module removal. Uh, see here. Uh, to remove the, the second command, to remove this uh, with the rm mod command, cramfs, this is the module. We have a mod prop module and it says name cramfs state absent. Simple as that. So similarly, you can see that uh, we have been considering configuring these things. So if you look at the uh, the sections 2 YAML also, this is for the section 2 part. So here also I have been uh, removed certain things uh, like this is actually I have customized uh, like lot of customization have been done here and because since we have been uh, utilized for our environment but uh, when you are using you can change the based on your requirement as well. So you can see this is for the LDAP client uh, LDAP client installations uh, removing the LDAP client telnet client so there are certain things these things being obviously we need to remove it and if you look at this management is not thing here uh, this is the section 3 dot camel this management have been been removed this is actually uh, configuring uh, kernel modules for the uh, different different uh, ip forwarding packet redirections icmp redirections so that is there and and here also there is a concept called handlers uh, or, or, or the rather we call it as an uh, like uh, notifications like in the sense when when this particular thing run it will notify there is a one called handlers handlers in the sense sometimes if you want to restart the service uh, likewise something like that see here this is handlers that we are dealing with so there are two handlers this is actually i have been written these two handlers uh, based on our requirement, you can do that one. So this is basically the handlers, which is to control your tasks. So we are using it. So likewise, you can see like uh, there are so many things that you need to look at, but it's pretty much straightforward, guys. Uh, so if you have the concept in mind, so you can deal with it. So this is you don't want to really write it down anything from the scratch. What you can do is you can take it from the uh, from here, let's say, for example, uh, if you search for the rel 9, we can see another ones. Let's see, we will be able to see this one. Rel 9, see, rel 9 PCI DSS, rel 9 uh, SDIG, OSPP. This is a different compliance, huh? CIS. Let's try to download this one. We'll see. Let's see whether we have this uh, task list. Yeah. See here it contain everything. So you can if you guys want to do deal with this one, this is going to be pretty much but keep, keep in mind you, you have to go through one by one. Na? Every everything you have to go through one by one. See here. It says uh, 1.1.10 dot .tml. This is for the uh, system wide crypto policy is not legacy. So keep in mind that one guys. Uh, so if you are not really require these things, you can remove it. This crypto policy, obviously you don't want to use it, but it's pretty much good. 
1.2 dot gamma. What is this? This is for the uh, temporary device partitioning. So I have been remove all the partitioning things uh, since this is not a uh, new spin up. Since this is a previous uh, like existing application running, so I just removed. Actually, not the existing, but red pole like already spin up machine. So this is quite good one, guys. Like uh, you can use this and I'll put it in the chat even if you want. Right. So hope every can everyone can see this uh, screen, right? So I'm just moving here and there. I think you will be able to visibly view it, right? Right. Okay. So uh, basically, right now, let's. Uh, this is the the that like we have the different type of uh, variable like template files also. Uh, if I show you uh, uh, for the different template files. Uh, for the auditing, like when you want to deal with the auditing template file, you can see this template file. It's, it's what they are going to do is they are going to straight away put it into the our configuration parameter. So this template file is also very much important. This is what we call it as a Jinja 2 template. Jinja 2 template whenever you want to deal with it. So even if you want to like uh, configure your own um, MOTD message of the day. See, MOTD J2, this is your MOTD J2. Like the login banner will take it from the one of the variable. This variable is defined in uh, under the groups was, not the group was actually default. Under the default main.tml. So if you see this one, you can see the, the banner. So even you, if you want, you can customize these banners as well. Uh, uh, like say, for example, uh, we'll say, uh, ADL connect demo machine. Right now, this has been customized. It. So that is how we are going to deal with. Like even if you look at here, SSH related, uh, uh, like see, Cypress related Cypress Max have been defined here. You want, if you want, you can configure, you can change it based on here. Like here, we have only few things, but we can add more as well. So this is very much related to the SSHD configuration. The SSHD configuration template file will be again here, uh, etc. Not here. Let's see um, files. No, that is tempass. So basically that is in um, rel 7 cis underscore shd. So basically that will be in somewhere in here actually guys. Section, I'm not quite sure which section it is but it is there. Yeah. So basically this is where you can see the SSH related content. Uh, no, this is basically yes, yes, yes. See here. So it's they are going to change the parameter C. So the protocol version two changes. It's not a Jinja two template. So here it's changing manually. So if you want to change in line anything in the already existing file we are using the module called line in file it's like a modification see ignore host no the host based authentications we are set no permit root logging set to no permit empty password no likewise we are doing a lot of things see 
Cypers they are taken from that particular one. Trail, trail 7, CIS, HSD under the Cypers. Mac also they are taking like this variables. So this is how the role is working. This is what we are going to do. Now, if you want to ensure that the roles is perfectly okay, and if you want to run it, what we are going to do is I'll show you the playbook camel. So this is a simple playbook camel. So I'm going to set trail server hardening the host de defined to the web underscore servers gather underscore facts uh, since this is a very time consuming thing facts gathering i just say no because uh, if you run it in the 100 machines so every 100 machine they are running through the facts gathering so i'm just say no this is a global uh, configurations parameter like if there is any errors while it is running because if you when you configure when you're dealing with if there are no, no server like no services which is they trying to search it then they will pop up errors so in that case it's actually not an error because the service is not there in that particular machine so we are saying if there are any errors just ignore that error and skip to the next uh, task sets place uh, separately and the role name we have said the role trail underscore cis this is exactly the role name huh? This exact role name. This role name has to be there. Now, what we need to go here is Ansible playbook. So, which very much simple with the private key option. We are going to say playbook.tml. Playbook.tml. So now they will be going to start the hardening. So you can see now it is starting the hardening first they will be ensuring cramp f is not there so they have disabled it now if you logged into this machine you will be able to see i'll show you So this is they are right now running everything. Right? Uh, this is the, this this auto mount is not already there. Auto FS is not installed in the machine, so that's why they are giving the errors and they ignore it because we have said the ignore errors. So the core dumping changes, it's already there. So there are a lot of changes. See changes. Say troubleshooting installations, it says okay. Let me let me log into the machine and show you changes there as well. Oh. Right. So if you look at here under the etc. mod prop d you will be able to see the cif conf so uh, this is we didn't create anything huh? so now you can see they have removed cramp fs free free xvf x uh, xvfs xfs jff2 hfs hs plus scores fs udfs they have removed all the things now you can see they are running on the second stage configuring the uh, crony daemon so if you can see, uh, they have been installed the chronic conf as well with their configuration. Uh, chronic configuration, see this is, we didn't do anything. This is from the script that they are running, the Ansible playbook. So everything is doing right now. So this is actually, they are trying to check the X window system is not installed, but actually that is not there. So they, they, since they are failing it, no group X windows available, result zero. It's a failure, but since we say the ignore errors, it's ignoring. Actually, this is not the error. This is because the particular that given service is not there. So now we actually started like somewhere on now it's uh, 440. We have started on like two, two to three minutes ago, let's say 435. Just, just look at how much time that this is consuming so this is of course nothing to worry tftp servers uh, they are checking whether these services are installed 
TFTP and then the TOG, Telnet, uh, Telnet client, RSH, RHS, RSH, RSH server, NIS server, these are not there already. Mail transfer, SNMP, HTTP proxy, Samba, IMAP, FTP, uh, DNS, RPC, NFS, these are the LDAP server, COPS, this is already not there, that's why it is giving errors. So this is where they are changing the uh, parameters, configuration parameters in the uh, kernel level, like IP, ICMP redirections, CCTL configurations. Previous path uh, filtering, so they are doing those things. Some are actually skipping. IPv6 is, if it is already disabled, that is skipping those things, they are nothing to do. <coughs> Audit logs are now creating here. <coughs> These are the audit content. I'll show you the audit file. So whenever that is creating in the audit, audit.d. Rules.d, you can see the rules, separate rules. See, by its names, you can see the rules. Cat trail 7, 4.4 dot rules that is defining this is actually when you do any time time changes in the machines that is going to be audited so now they are creating different different files here now you can see it is see it's creating see 4.19 4.19 so you can see that is creating already so different rule sets are creating while it is running here it's creating here as well we, we don't do anything huh? we are not doing anything so now the auditing is completed now they are doing the different things file permission configurations they are changing the files in the rc log cron tap cron dot hourly cron dot daily they are doing different changes here. Cron dot weekly, monthly. Uh, it's actually changing the permissions. Huh? So they do the changes in the permissions. So now you can see it's explore and forwarding is disabled. So this is the SSH configuration. If you can see here under the ETC SSH, SSH deconfig, you, uh, you will be seeing that uh, uh, the changes have been applying. See permit root logging, they will be changed those things definitely. I'll be just uh, skipping this one. So they are going to change this thing. So now they are being configured the PAM, PAMD as well, password authentication, system mode, password auth. This is for uh, uh, password reuse limitations, password hashing algorithm. These are the changes that we do for the user management perspective and password expiration are sitting here. <clears throat> and an inactive password lock days, password lockout period, use mask, you, you mask values are going to change it here since these are having the default value there are no changes it says okay etc bash rc profile are being uh, set the default uh, shell timeout values 
permissions obviously there are no changes in the ET, permission changes on the etc shadow group g shadow pass wd files so it says okay so you can see this one right finally actually they will be ignoring this one uh, because audit daemon has to be restarted separately and you can see now when you run this one there are already status in the ok of 174 changes 80 this is how it's goes for like they have ignored 27 values if you if you rerun again like you can see now it's only 446 it's just 10 minutes to run the entire play playbook but obviously when when you are creating it you you will be obviously like consuming your time at least for a half and day half a day to to compile this particular playbook because you are getting the general playbook and you need to change it based on your requirement so but once it is changed just a matter of applying any number of time you can apply any number of time there won't be any impact now if i just logged into this machine again you will be seeing the message of the day as we'll see this is ADL connected demo machines authorized users only all activity may be monitored and reported so everything are been now configured just uh, this is this is a hardened machine if you are running AWS environment you can take a create a uh, machine AMI Amazon machine image and you can use that AMI to the spin up all the machines or if you have already spin up machines you can use this playbook and run it that is also possible so this is how we are going to deal with this uh, ansible automations this is basically what we call it as ansible automations so guys uh, if you do have any questions concerns uh, we can uh, like since we have a uh, like another 10 minutes time period so we can go for a uh, question and answer session So basically, uh, this is how uh, we are dealing with the Ansible automations and uh, and these things. So even like, uh, let me show you again, uh, like even if you want to deal with, uh, this is for the Red Hat Enterprise environment, but if you want to check about the, like not only for the hardening, but let's say for example, Nginx, uh, let's just search for the Nginx. Uh, so we don't have anything there. Uh, reverse proxy let's say reverse proxy let's see whether we have any module for the reverse proxy configuration that is also not there uh, kubernetes let's see for the kubernetes no. but of course you can uh, you can go for like if you can see here there are about uh, 37000 uh, roles 37,000 rows, like almost all the things will be included there. So almost all the things will be included, like uh, nothing to worry, 37,000 rows will be in here. So it's just a matter of using it, guys. So I just take it for the rel 9, but if you want to have the Ubuntu, let's see Ubuntu. Uh, Yeah, here this is for the CIS benchmark, CIS hardening, but this is Ubuntu 16, 16.04, but let's say Ubuntu 20. This is for the Ubuntu 20, but we need to search it for the hardening, right? So you can see CIS Ubuntu 20.04. This is Ansible hardening guideline for the CIS, Ansible for the CIS, CIS benchmark 20.04. There is another one also 20.04. You can you can refer these things. Huh? Ubuntu 20.04. Uh, then again, uh, 
22 we have the 22 cis benchmarks from the same same person mean point group previously also we have taken it from the mean point mean point group so just you can download this one just a matter of copy and paste the command ansible galaxy role install so they are going to install it you can ignore error skip uh, fail So there is issue with this uh, installation, so we just need to check it that one also. It says they cannot install it. But we can see other roles as well. But of course, uh, like you can search it for the roles, you can search it for the collections. There are obviously different ways of uh, going to do the searching, guys. So you can search it for the, like you can see installing Docker Compose, that is, uh, there is a uh, Ansible role for the Docker Compose like so many things so it's just a matter of using it 20 also there i think 2004 this is 22 cis benchmark this is what we have tried right now no right we try to do that one uh shashika there's a question actually yes. they are asking yeah. whether uh this is oracle 9.2 os version supported uh, yes, basically, uh, if you look at the rel, rel environment and the Oracle environment, since uh, Oracle Linux and the rel is identical, it's basically supported. Like uh, whatever the playbook that I have written here, that I used here for the rel 9, this can be utilized for uh, rel 8, rel 7, uh, rel 9, uh, even for the, uh, with the slice modifications, not exactly, slight modifications you can use for the Oracle Linux and even for the Amazon Linux that is possible because it the all these oracle linux uh, uh, amazon linux and whatever the real versions and the centos uh, basically these are similar variations um, with the sl slight slight changes there are no major changes with the slight modifications guaranteed you can use it you can use it for this right um seems there are no other questions uh, yeah. but answering again a question a general question that has been asked from an uh, a person who has participated uh, we will be posting uh, this recorded session on axiata digital labs youtube channel so if you need any clarifications or if you need to go through the session again you can go and uh, see it from there and there's another question is it yeah, possible yes. to do with Oracle Automation Manager? Uh, there's a, I'm, I'm not 100% quite sure to like, because I don't have much idea about the Oracle Automation Manager. So uh, that of course I have a doubt uh, that without checking it, I can't tell you the exact answer for this one because I don't have much experience or the, any idea about the Oracle Automation Manager. But if they supported for the YAML, and uh, obviously this will be possible but if they are not supporting for the ml that might be a doubtful uh, that we whether we can use it or not and there is another question say, is there any ansible galaxy playbook for the uh, kubernetes cs hardening as well of Pragit, like we need to check this one because uh, uh, we have written down an ansible playbook for the uh, uh, spin up the kubernetes cluster in terms of hardening, uh, like I didn't see any playbook there, uh, any 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 uh, any Galaxy playbook there, roles there. But uh, obviously, you need to check it. Uh, we have to check it. Uh, we need to search it basically. Most probably that there might be things, but in the roles, even for the Kubernetes, I didn't see any uh, particular role. If that is not there, so we have to write it down. Um, uh, Chamini, like there's a questions like if we can uh, share uh, the yes. uh, YouTube. Can... Yes, I, I will, I will. I will uh, share the link on this chat itself so you can, uh, you know, go to it and see the recorded session. But uh, we will be uploading it, uh, this session maybe by Monday. So you can actually go through the other session that has been done as well. Um, any possibility we can get these slides? Yes, 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 definitely I provide it. Um, I so, think we uh, can wrap up the session. 
Yeah, uh, how, uh, okay. how we can if, share this Germany? Uh, so what we can do is uh, we can share this. Uh, maybe if they can uh, drop their email addresses on this. Um, yes, yes. The yes. chat like. so we can actually yeah, send it through corporate communication or something like that. Or maybe we can upload uh, it it into a platform and then share it as well, Shashika. Shashika, there's another question. Is Ansible like as Terraform? Hello? Shashika, I uh, hope you can hear me. Ah, extremely sorry, I just disconnected from the session. So to answer that questions, like uh, if you want to spin up the sort of a infrastructure environments, so obviously we are using the, uh, uh, basically we are using the Ansible, uh, sorry, Terraform, but to manage the services inside those uh, infrastructure we are using the ansible so ansible does not support for the infrastructure provisioning side so that's uh, like uh, terraform and ansible are two deep like used for the two different purposes uh, we'll see. um hope there are no other questions so we can wrap up the practical conversation so as we wrap up this, uh, we extend our heartfelt gratitude to Mr. Shashika Suren for shedding light on the path to a more secure and efficient digital future and for delivering a highly informative session packed with practical knowledge as well. We appreciate your active participation in this session for nearly two hours and we are excited about more exciting discussions in the world of tech and safety. So this has been the second session, so there are more sessions to come. Um, so stay alert, keep being creative, and uh, never stop learning. We are ADL Connect, a global initiative of the ADL Corporate Marketing Team at Arc Digital Labs. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much.